Ambitious means having or showing a strong desire and determination to succeed. In modern times, that usually translates to fame, power, getting rich. But it also means achieving goals. So, are you ambitious for the things of God? Do you want to have success in your life and in your business? What is God's idea of success? It is joy, satisfaction, focus, and the drive to do what he wants. So how do you define ambition, success these days? And can you have the right ambition and serve God in the process? I'm going to share three strategies that I do to make sure my ambition, my drive, and my focus are all going in the right direction for the success that God wants. Join me. Hey there, this is Deneen TV, your Christian business growth strategist and clarity coach. Today, what I'd like to chat about are two things that you may not think go together, ambition and God. It all begins with having the mindset of serving God, because really there is no difference between all the parts of your life, your personal part, your professional part, or your spiritual part. We all want to do it with excellence. You have the ambition, you have the strong desire and determination to do each of these things well, right? When you have the ambition to do well in your business, it's an opportunity to really show God's goodness by serving your clients and solving their problems. You have the ambition to build the business that actually blesses others and helps those who join your team. When you have ambition to do well in your personal life, it's an opportunity to build a solid reputation of trust and integrity. It's living out the fruits of the Spirit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, especially self-control. And when you have ambition as well in your spiritual life, it's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to deepen your relationship with God through your daily time in Bible study, in prayer, in worship. Knowing God is in control of all that you're doing, all that you want to do, all that you will do, that he is showing you what success in his economy really looks like. So you may think that ambition is like a dirty word or a worldly word, but I really want to reframe it. And I know you love when I say that. And I want you to look at how ambition really drives us to do our best for God as we work in our businesses. So I'm going to give you some strategies that I use to help my business and me just stay focused on serving God through my ambition. So number one, we'll get started. Commit to creating with God. With God at the controls as the CEO, the chief everything officer, right? That means really getting clarity around how God has designed you. That is totally the key your personality, your experiences, the things that are in your life that he has brought to the table. It also means creating a business in the way that God designed you because that makes your life simpler. It doesn't feel like you're always chasing something if you know that you're on the right path, the one that he wants for you. And you can build your perfect business, the one that God designed for you as well. I know for me, I use my ambition when I'm planning with God. And I do that in my journal every single day. I have one journal and I use it as a prayer journal. I use it as an idea journal. I use it as a gratitude journal. Everything is inside of my journal because I am one person and God is that thread that connects all the parts of me. So my journal 
is connecting all the things that he has me doing, all the ambitious things that he has me doing. The second thing is to really combat negative thoughts. Those are the thoughts that the enemy puts into your mind that are distracting you. Let's face it. Things will not always go as planned. And we need to be able to learn from those experiences. We need to actually be able to deal with things as they actually are and not what we wish would happen or what we say will happen or what we think will happen. We have to deal with the reality of what is happening. And that means that we stay in alignment with God. We stay close to God. And when we do that, we know that it's all going to work out for our good, right? If we keep our ambition in line with what God is asking us to do, then it's going to work out in the way that he wants it to work out. I remember when I opened my business and educational center, I knew it was what God wanted me to do. I knew it was exactly the next step for me. It was something that I tried to do it my own way, and that wasn't working out. And I finally stepped into it, and I was doing it his way. It was an obedience thing. Because after 18 months, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But it worked out the way God wanted it to. Because what happened was that by closing the business and educational center after only 18 months, while sad, I learned so much. And it launched me into the next thing that God had for me. And that was writing my book. If you want to learn more about that, you can uh, look at this video. I'll put it up in the cards. I'll put it up in the cards. <laughs> And you can learn more details about that story. You know, when I was at my lowest and I was really doubting, that's when all those negative, distracting thoughts came in. But I stayed close to God and I did what the Bible says. I captured those thoughts and I gave them back to God. I actually kind of shook them all up and I kind of put them through a filter so that I could reframe them, again, reframing them with the truth, with the truth of God's word. So I have a tool for you. I'll put that link down in the description. It's called my Philippians 4.8 tool. And I love this tool because it really did give me a way to take those negative thoughts and to bring them into alignment with God and really see what did I learn? What was true about the situation? What were things that happened that were lovely that I could think about? So that's in there for you. So go ahead and get that. And we'll move on to number three. The third thing is that we have to be in the moment. We only have today. God has not promised us tomorrow. So we have to do well with today. We have to take the opportunity to do what we see every single day. We have to be aware and we have to be looking for what I call those God incidences, right? Those coincidences that are from God. We really need to embrace the moment that we're in and not always be looking so far in the future and worrying about the future that we miss what God has for us today. I love what Matthew 6 verses 19 through 21 say. They say, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy. The thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will also be. You know, it really does talk about not storing up those treasures here on earth, but to store them in heaven. And every day when you help a client, when you support a team member, when you encourage someone who is hurting, you are storing up treasures in heaven. Without ambition, you would not be on the lookout for these opportunities. Ambition calls us not to be passive. Did you hear it? Ambition calls us not to to be passive. And in verse 24 of that same chapter 6 in Matthew, it says, 
No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and you will despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Do you see? You cannot serve two masters. You must serve God through your ambition and not use your ambition to be self-serving. You know, it really is bringing all the energy that God provides when you do His will. Negativity needs to leave. And there's another reframe exercise that I have for you. You can say this to yourself, because I know those negative thoughts are coming in every single day. And quickly, so that you can be in those moments of each and every day, you can say, instead of saying, I will never whatever it is, say, but today I. Okay, so here's your negative thought. I never, or I will never, I am not able, whatever that is you put in there. I want you to put a big, but today I. So let me give you an example. I will never be able to get consistent clients, but Today, I have two calls that may turn into new clients. You see how that works? It's only for today that we worry about. Don't think about what has happened. Don't think about or worry about what will happen. Stay in the day. Stay in today. So we need to look for these wins. These small little wins. And we need to give God gratitude every single day. What we really need to do is embrace today because if we plan with God today, then we will be ready for tomorrow. In Matthew 6, this is a great chapter, it even gives us this of what we are to do. And it's from verses 33 and 34 there in Matthew 6. It says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I love that. We can be in today and we can do what needs to get done today because we have that energy, that ambition to do what God is asking us to do. So let's go back to the beginning of what we started to talk about. First we said that ambitious means having or showing a strong desire and determination to succeed, to achieve your goals. I'm going to ask you again. Are you ambitious for the things of God? Do you want the type of success that God wants you to have? Remember what that was? That was joy, satisfaction, focus, and drive. The drive to do what He's asking you to do. Can a Christian be ambitious and still serve God through their business? Yes. I'm going to say yes, 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 yes. When the focus is on seeking His kingdom first. So how can you do that? Well, you can plan it all with God, that daily journal, so that that thread is running through all the parts of your life, right? You can capture those negative thoughts. And I've got that Philippians 4.8 filter for you to pull those negative thoughts through. And then you can take the opportunity each and every day by doing the reframing exercise so that you're not worried about the past or worried about the future. Just being ambitious for today. This is Deneen TV. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure that you like, give me some comments, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and as always, please share the content if you're enjoying it. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, be filled to overflowing.